remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Yes, my friend, how deep does the rabbit hole really go? Well, that's what we are here to discover. Dedicated to the only serious choice, the gospel of Jesus Christ the music and the spoken word, you're watching Light Source Victory Television Live with me, your host, Pastor J. Stan McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next 30 minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. My friends, it's time for the most important half hour of the day, Bible study. Now, of course, it is my Bible study time that I spend with you. We try and do it each and every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday right here on AccessTV.org and, of course, on Facebook and other social media around the world. So, grab your pencil, your paper, and your Bible. Get on the phone, call up friends and family. Text, message them, tweet them, share, message, whatever the case may be. However it is you get the message out. And tell them it's time for Bible study, Light Source Victory Television Live. Broadcasting from the greatest city on earth, Hartford, Connecticut, New England's rising star. Stick in state, don't go anywhere, my friends. We will be, oh yeah, right back. Oh yeah. There, I'm gonna get a little feedback. <clears throat> it's always some technical issue. It just, it just, it's, it's the nature of things. Welcome aboard. It is time for the most important hour of the day, of course, Bible study. And um, it, I, I just love, I love Bible study. So if you like Bible study, like I like Bible study, uh, you, you, you've tuned into the right place. We're here. Want to remind you, every Sunday night, every Tuesday, every, every Sunday, Tuesday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, five days a week, we're here uh, live uh, to help uh, uh, share in the uh, life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. On your television screen is that life-changing word. Let's get started because we only have a half hour. It goes by very, very quickly. want to give you uh, the, uh, I guess, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, word i won't say rules but uh, i'll give you the lay of the land here what we do is we have bible study i don't review i pick it up where i left off when i was last with you so uh, we are currently at romans chapter 2 verse 15 romans chapter 2 verse 15 that's where we were when we were last together which was of course yesterday or last night if you miss any portion of the program of course all you have to do is um you go to accesstv.org uh log on to or or click on on on, on the channel for uh, life source ministries and uh, all of our programs are right there all right there's probably four or five hundred bible study programs out there in cyberspace somewhere uh, but as we are kicking this off again for the first time after a one-year break or so, uh, we are uh, building up the, the 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 new library, if you will, or the 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 the, uh, the 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 teachings that are applying to now. Let's just put it that way. So those are the only ones you're going to see on Light Source Ministries. So uh, you know, go there, and uh, you will find uh, where we started at Romans chapter chapter one, verse one. Okay, with that, let's not spend a whole lot of time talking and jabberjacking. Here we go, on your, light, on your screen, the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. It's been a long day, but no matter what, what, no matter what you go through in the day, 
always take time out of your busy schedule to spend a little time uh, growing and knowing uh, the life-changing Word of the Most High God. Okay? Verse 15. Ah, we can't start there. Let's, let's, let's set this up. New Living Translation on this side of your screen. King James Version on this side of your screen. Let's go up just a little bit so that we can get to... Uh, um, you know, I don't, I don't do review for... Because uh, we'll spend the whole show always getting caught up. Let's go to verse 11 and, and start our study there. Okay? Verse 11. Reading out of the New Living Translation. Romans chapter 2, verse 11. For God does not show favoritism. Reading out of the New Living Translation. For God does not show favoritism. God will punish the Gentiles when they sin, even though they never had God's written law. And he will punish the Jews when they sin, for they do have the law. Verse 13 at the top of your screen. For it is not merely knowing the law that brings God's approval. Those who obey the law will be declared right in God's sight. Verse 13 out of the, uh, out of the uh, King James. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Okay? And as we talked about yesterday, we, we understand and know that the law establishes um, your inability to, well, let me rephrase that. The law establishes where you fail and why you need God's salvation plan. It is not the law that causes you to sin. It is the law by where you are condemned because of your sin. Okay, sin that you commit is the outward manifestation of the inward sin nature. That's why Christ didn't sin, because there was no sin in him. All right, the sin you do is the outward manifestation of being a sinner. So, uh, your, 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 your keeping, quote unquote, the law would indicate that you're bringing your members under subjection uh, to the will of God, whereby in your daily behavior, you do less and less things that would be found uh, or that would be found um, in, um, in opposition to, to God's will, if you will. All right. Verse 14. Even when Gentiles who do not have God's written law instinctively follow what the law says, they show that their hearts, that in their hearts, they know right from wrong. Now, I want you to wrap your brain around this. If instinctively individuals keep the law though they had not received the written law, it would indicate that you can choose to be in compliance with the will of God without a written law that would thereby condemn you for being in opposition to God's will. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. The law establishes the means by where you can be condemned. But being in or out of of, of the will of God it has nothing to do with a law being passed or written or, 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 or without there being some sort of legislation. Dangerous actions are dangerous actions whether or not said action is against a written law. One acts in faith. One acts in righteousness apart from any rules that say you have to act a certain way. You act that way because within your, in your heart you know it is the right thing to do. In that it is the right thing to do is, is 
evident that you know God's will. All right? Because as we went over two days ago or yesterday or whenever we were reading through it in Romans, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And as a result, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Verse 15. They demonstrate that God's law is written within them for their own consciences either accuse them or tell them that they are doing what is right. The day will surely come when God, by Jesus Christ, will judge everyone's secret life. This is my message. If you are a Jew, you are relying on God's law for your special relationship with him. You boast that all is well between yourself and God. Yes, you know what he wants. You know right from wrong because you have been taught his law. You are convinced that you are a guide for the blind and a beacon light for people who are lost in darkness without God. You think you know Excuse me, you think you can instruct the ignorant and teach children the ways of God. For you are certain that in God's law you have complete knowledge and truth. Well then, if you teach others, why don't you teach yourself? You tell others not to steal, but do you steal? You say it is wrong to commit adultery, but do you do it? You condemn idolatry, but do you steal from pagan temples? You are so proud of knowing the law, but you dishonor God by breaking it. See, when you know to do the right thing and you don't, then you besmirch the name of God. You besmirch he whom you represent. Because the character, nature, and the attributes of God become the attributes of the believer. Now, if one says, well, you know, I'm filled, sanctified, set aside, filled with the precious of the Holy Ghost, and then you act in ways that are contrary to the Holy Spirit, there's a real conflict there. All right. I think that this establishes most clearly the need for 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 sa for salvation and a and a savior. All right. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No wonder the scriptures say, verse twenty four, top of the screen. No wonder the scriptures say, the world blasphemes the name of God because of you. You know how many people, okay. Uh, you know, if we fast forward into the year 2012, where we're, where we're at right now, the day after the election for the president of the United States, um, if, 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 if you listen to a lot of people today, a lot of people tell you that they don't want to have anything to do with church. They don't want to have anything to do with religion. Why? Because of the actions and activities of those who purport to represent said quote-unquote religion said church said association of believers and by extension the god and lord and savior whom they represent by virtue of the fact that they claim kinship to jesus they claim oneness with him yet they don't demonstrate in any outward behavior uh, the attributes and qualities that all expect to see in someone who is is a believer okay so when you when you act out of sorts yet claim the blood of the lamb then then it, then it then you then you besmirch now of course this is this is paul talking to the the romans and 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 here we see him him speaking to the jewish believers trying to make the, 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 the case to them 
for the need for grace. Okay? The need for righteousness that comes by faith. All right? Uh, and, and not of works, lest any man should boast. Let's continue. No wonder the scriptures say the world blasphemes the name of God because of you. The Jewish ceremony of circumcision is worth something only if you obey the law. But if you don't obey God's law, you are no better off than the uncircumcised Gentile. And if the Gentiles obey God's law, God won't God give them all the rights and honors of being his own people? In fact, uncircumcised, uncircumcised Gentiles who keep God's law will be much better off than you Jews who are circumcised and know so much about God's law but don't obey it. Now, of course, this can be applied to anything and, and most certainly to, you know, us who, who name the name of Christ and say that we're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? If we who are saved by grace, if we who look to Christ are not obeying and, and manifesting the character of he whom we claim has set us apart and set us free, then what, then what good are we? I mean, what profit is there? Okay, because you could tell a tree by the fruit it bears. To what, what value is there in a apple tree that bears no apples, in a, in a peach tree that bears no peaches, in a fig tree that bears no, no figs? A tree that bears no fruit is most certainly useless as it relates to the purpose that one would have a fruit tree. I mean, you generally don't have fruit trees for the shade. You know, you're not generally, you know, have a, a grove, or orchard of, of fruit-bearing trees for firewood, okay? You have them so that you can pick the fruit and the bounty that the tree produces and you go from there, whether you're going to make juice or a pie or sell them, sell them or eat them and consume them, whatever the case may be. But if they, don't, if they don't bear any fruit, then what good? Same thing with you. If you're not bearing fruit, what, what good are you? Of what value are you? Okay, What value are you to your own self? How does it profit you if it not be real and genuine? Verse 28, top of the screen. For you, not, for you are not a true Jew just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the Jewish ceremony of circumcision. No, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. A true and true circumcision is is not a cutting of the body, but a change of heart produced by God's Spirit. Whosoever has that kind of change seeks praise from God, not from people. You know, if, if people validate you and who you are, if you, if you get your validation from, from people, then, then there's going to be a, 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 a real problem. Because people, 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 they don't set the standard. Okay? Uh, if you look to be validated by other individuals, then other individuals are who you try to please. All right? It should be that you are trying to please the Lord. Now, Scripture tells us that if you do the right thing as a result of a desire to please the Lord, then the world's not going to embrace you. The world is not going to like you. All right? Why? Because they didn't like the example and he who you represent. Now, 
if they didn't like Jesus, who is your Lord and Savior, what makes you think that they're going to like you? Okay? When people persecute, ridicule, and attack someone, then they generally don't embrace the individual who comes representing that someone. Okay, this is not rocket science. It's not, it's not that deep. Okay? It, 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 it really is not that, not that deep. Let's continue. Verse 1, chapter 3. Then what advantage of being a Jew? What's, what's the advantage? Is there any value in the Jewish ceremony of circumcision? Verse 2, yes. Being a Jew has many advantages. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of God. True, some of them were unfaithful. But just because they broke their promise, just because they break their promises, does not mean God will break his promises. All right? Let me read that one more time. True, some of them were unfaithful, but just because they broke their promises, does that mean God will break his promises? Of course not. Though everyone else in the world is a liar, God is true. As the scriptures say, he will be proved right in what he says, and he will win his case in court. But some say our sins are our sins serve a good purpose for God will see uh, for for people will see God's goodness when he declares us sinners to be innocent isn't it unfair then for God to punish us that act that that is actually the way some people talk let's read this out of King James but if our righteousness condemn the righteousness of God if our unrighteousness condemned the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man, God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? Verse 7. I just love the King James. It just I, I guess I've been born and bred in King James. Okay, but the, the modern English is much easier to understand if you're hearing it. All right. For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my life unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Verse 7 out of the New Living Translation. But some might still argue, how can God judge and condemn me as a sinner if my dishonesty highlights his truthfulness and brings him more glory? Now, clearly you can see the faultiness of that argument. And, and the, the utter foolishness of it. But some would dare to make it. Why? Because they like to continue in sin under the misconception that, they're, that, that grace abounds. The more they sin, the more gracious God apparently must be because he is, he is pouring out the measure necessary to meet you and bring you into that place of, of salvation. So the, the more you sin, the greater God's grace. Well, that, that's a foolish argument. That, that's, that's a foolish argument. The more debt you get into, the more that you will be given to get out of debt. So, shall you continue to be and get in debt that you might receive more to get you out of debt so that the person that is giving you that which is necessary to remove you from debt may get more glory? Well, that, that's foolhardy. I mean, all that does is to serve as a justification for you to continue recklessly getting and being in debt. All right. Well, sin is sort of the same way. We don't continue in sin. We're not going to grow sin uh, under the misguided notion that if we sin and God saves us, he gets the glory because of his grace. And therefore, the more of a sinner I am, the greater God's grace. That does not profit you. Because see, as we have mentioned here in the earlier portion of Romans, God's wrath is poured out on they who commit such things, particularly they who know better, but then do them just the same. The sinner is, um, 
while the, while, while the sinner is without excuse because God's law is written in his heart. He nonetheless is not one that has a relationship with God. So therefore he's not subject to the will of God because he is not one in relationship with him. But you and I, we claim to have a relationship with Christ. We claim to be saved and sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. So if we continue in sin, if we willfully go out and just sin, then what remaineth for, for, for a, a recompense for, our, for our, our attitudes of disobedience? Because that's all it is. It's wanton disobedience. If you follow that kind of thinking, verse 8, If you follow that kind of thinking, however, you might as well say that the more we sin, the better it is. Those who say such things deserve to be condemned. Yet some slander me by saying, this is what I preach. Well, then, are we Jews better off or better than others? No, not at all. For we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. As the scriptures say, no one is good, not even one. Verse 10 out of the King James, Romans chapter 3. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after God see we well it says so you know, might as well just read it in no sense in paraphrasing it says they are all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable there is none that doeth good no not one New Living Translation all have turned away from God all have gone wrong. No one does good, not even one. Verse 13, their talk is foul like the stench of an open grave. Their speech is filled with lies. The poison of a deadly snake drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They are quick to commit murder. Wherever they go, destruction and misery follow them. They do not know what true peace is. They have no fear of God to restrain them. That's pretty powerful. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. All right? So the individual who says, you know what? I'm going to do what I want to do because I want to do it. And said individual know what the will of God is. And know that God's will is, 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 is expressed and, and then can articulate what that will is to others and, and, and then to teach or to preach it, it but, but, but not live it. And I don't mean in the, in, the, in, the, in the way that we have a tendency to do things through you know external comparison traps. I know I'm doing okay because I judge my actions based on yours. And so if you're doing bad and I do just a little bit better than, than what, what I think you're doing, then I'm okay. There's this kind of mixed up way that we, we say we're okay when we're really not. Because the standard isn't what someone else is doing. The standard isn't what sister be better than you is doing or what brother be better than me is doing. The standard is the word of God. And when you measure yourself against the standard of God's word, then you see that you fall short. We all fall short of his glory. And therefore, there is a need for salvation. There is a need for a savior. There is a need for someone to say, you know what? I will rescue you. And then there's also a need for you to say, Lord, here I am. Rescue me. A sinner. I want your grace in my life. I want your will to be achieved. I want to be a servant in your kingdom, in your glory, in your, I want to be in your service. Ah, my stars. 
it's just the way things happen here, unfortunately. Uh, we're out of time. <sighs> I tell you, a half hour goes so fast. But we have nothing but time left. Take a short 23 hour and 30 minute break, and then we'll be back. Give you some time to reflect on the Word of God. Amen. Amen. All right, my friends, we will be back tomorrow to do it all once again right here, Light Source Victory Television, live with me, your host, Pastor Jay Stan McCauley. I want to remind you every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights at 11 o'clock p.m., we are here broadcasting live Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time. Okay? So tune in. And, uh, you know, once we get a, a critical mass of people watching, we'll start to take your phone calls, answer some questions that you may have, and all of those nice and neat things. You can catch the program in the repeat phrase or in the repeat um, f format, if you will, uh, on Facebook and, of course, YouTube, as well as accesstv.org under Light Source Ministries. Remember, my friends, when it's all said and done, the only thing you need to know is this fact, and that is, of course, that Jesus Christ saves and changes lives. Won't you call on his name today? Allow him to be Lord of your life. God bless you all. Keep you strong in the faith. We will see you right here next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.